Hello, today I'm back with another advanced steel video. I'm going to do a splice joint between two beams, and uh, it's a it's a connection that's used a lot in New York for renovation jobs, where those existing buildings, and we need to bring in beams that are larger than the elevator or the hoist, and uh, they need to be welded back together. Sometimes there's plates on the flanges, but you know, generally they like to weld them to keep the flat outside of the beam. Uh, so let me, I'm just going to draw in a beam. My UCS is off, so let me delete that. Put the UCS back home. Pick a beam. I'm going to draw a 10 foot beam. Uh, that's a W12 by 26. Uh, if you right click in the top of the macro, you can see the material and the coating are selected. That means that they'll come up the same as the previous time the macro was closed. Same here, you know, the positioning and the mirroring will say the same. Here, the model roll is selected because I've already used it, but Generally, when you open it, that's not selected, so you probably want to select that. And it's going to be a beam, so that's fine. So we've got our beam. Now, let's say we want to splice this, so we're going to split it in the middle. So I want to split beam, split that in the middle. Generally, splices aren't put in the middle of a beam. They'd be offered to one side, so that all the weight's not on the splice. But for this example, we'll just put it in the center. So I'll go to the connection vault and pick this splice joint with the plates. Pick this, pick the right, pick the main beam, right click, pick the secondary beam, right click, and it'll put in some plates. Right, so you have the choice if you go to general it's web, flange, splice. So we just want to do web splice for now. So we have the web splice, we can see these boards are offset this way. A little bit so let's check our web and our bolt distance see this should be one and a half for my case anyway I like we generally put one and a half inches and three inches between everything else is three and a half and one fine uh, I'm just gonna put one row one column and one column so six bolts should be enough um, that's probably good. Let's see how take the plate. The plate's a half inch plate. That should be fine. So that'll do. So we've got our web plates. Alright. So now we've got some type of splice. And now, in order to make this one beam again, we need to weld these two together. So we need some weld preparation. So, somebody else might have a better way of doing this. Uh, I, I, had, I struggled at the start to find a way. So this is the way I do it now. Uh, so pick this moment connection. This one here. Moment connection beam to beam. Now, it, these beams don't look like this, but this is how it works in here. So if, if the way it shows it in the diagram, it shows it one beam running lengthways and one beam making into it. I don't see how this can create a relevant connection, to be honest with you. Because it cuts the web back, so it doesn't allow the web to go all the way in. So <clears throat> I guess that's for another video. So we have now we have some preparation here, which is not ideal, but let's go inside. So I don't want a space here on the web. I like this to be tight. Once it's fabricated correct or then there's no issues. It's a nice tight joint. Up here I need space, I need to move this back and bar across, so I'll put it in, I'll put it in shaded so you can see a little bit better, just for a little bit. <clears throat> so the back and bar, I don't want full, I want it longer because it's got to extend later in, so it was six and a half, we can make it seven and a half, but let's make it eight. Alright, so that's good. Right, so we want to move this back and bar as one inch wide. We want to move it, if we move it to here, that's center, we have to move it over a half inch. And then I want a quarter inch space, so I'll have to move it back one eighth. 
So I want to move it over three eighths. So the width is one, and then I want to move it over minus three eighths. All right, so now the backup bar is where we want it to be. Now, we just have no preparation on the other side. So what we do is, we close that, and we'll copy this joint the opposite way around. So if we go close that down, go to your tools, and just go to create by template. Select that box, go to this beam, go to this beam, and now you've created, again, same thing on the opposite side. Now, we don't need this connection box anymore, so we'll delete that connection box. Now, the connection box for the second one is not here because we copied it, and it doesn't appear until you open the joint properties again. So open the joint property, close that, and there's your box. Now delete that box. So now we can start to delete that backup bar. We can delete that backup bar. We can delete that well now. This well then, as you can see now, we have what we call the rat holes on both sides. So there's room for the backup bar. All right, so that's good. Now we want this side to be straight, so select that and go to your features, or sorry, not features, go to quick views and change presentation type. All right, now, so now we can see it. So we want delete that one and we got straight we're going to delete this one we got straight all right so now we're going to select this one and turn on the features all right so now i need this feature to be over this direction quarter inch in the x direction so what we'll do is we'll turn this back to 2d wireframe And you can move this 0.25. Yeah, no, that's, you know, I was just trying that. That usually doesn't work. I, I So we have... This one, so we'll do line, draw a line here, 0.25. I've already moved this top one over the 0.25. So click there, click back here, click here. So now we have four lines created that are a quarter inch over. And it's recreated that connection or that, that feature only larger. So we want to join those four. Click on that, all those four are joined. We want to revolve this around the x-axis in order to use that feature. So, okay, well, that's revolved. So now let's delete that feature. So now there's no feature on the top. So now go onto your features and select polygon contour UCS. Select that, right click polylines, select your polyline. And then you have your bevel, right? So we want to move that down to the bottom. So we also want that on the bottom side. Down here. So we can delete that one. So what we can do is select this one. And then go to your tools palette. Advanced copy. Select mirror. 3D mirror. Pick mirror points. So I usually pick the outer extremities of one side, so the outside there and here. So we're going to create a plane in the center of the beam. So give it a point in the Z and the X axis. Preview that. And you can see it's there at the bottom. So there's your well preparation. So turn on the shaded. You can see that's what you got. Now, if you want to copy that, what you do is 
for firstly let's copy the beam over so we'll copy the beam in the z in the minus z direction five feet let's delete the features delete let's copy that oh sorry let's copy that five feet in this direction so now we have another beam that we want to apply this to so firstly we'll select these two beams turn off all the features and then turn on all the features all right so all the features are on turn this into 2d wireframe so we don't miss anything go to your custom connections select create connection template two beams left beam right click right beam right click select and call that splice whatever you want to call it w12 by 26 select the drivers which are the objects select the beam and the end select this left this this is your prompts left beam these will appear as you're copying this connection to the next location it'll prompt you what to do and the beams will show so you can see so just close that and that saves that into this drawing so this can now be used in this drawing so if i go here and go insert connection template click on the drawing this will show the dwgs that are in the connection templates and also the one you're working on right now which is this one so all the rest of these are in my connection templates so open that select your splice joint this is the one i just created click ok it tells me look for the left beam which i just typed in it says look for the right beam it also tells you on the screen usually select allow modify you don't have to you can close that i mean you can click on the blue box again and click change that again if you want to. but there you have your connection again and you know you can put these connections on the inside the outside now if you want to have these if you want to create more of these for each of the w12s or some w10s uh you want to save this in your connection templates folder uh, which I'll show you where that is now. So if you just want to go save as. And then go up here. Go back to your C drive. Go to program data. Which can, which as you can see. Is a hidden folder. But I have it visible. Uh, program data. Autodesk. Advanced Steel 2019. USA. Shared connection templates and save it in here i don't usually i usually like to create them job by job not to just have them there all the time i guess it can be good practice but also then you can forget how to create them so i like to recreate them job by job generally uh, so i guess that's all for now uh hopefully this video helps people i know there's some people have asked me about doing this type of joint before and I have some other t splice joints that uh, are a little trickier than these ones which maybe I'll do in the next video. I uh, hope this was helpful to some people and uh, I'll see you next time. Thank you for watching. Um, as you can see, I'm just, this is just a quick follow up to the last video. Uh, as you could probably notice this line uh, I was going through you know a little bit quick I guess and my modeling was off a little bit so these lines I drew were off a little bit so we want to move in the x direction to here and move the bottom of this in the x direction here so you see it's gone it's straight there now uh, the problem is, I guess, you know, I was trying to rush it a little bit for the video and I, I didn't want to get bogged down in it. So I figured I'd just take a look at it afterwards. So do the same here. Select the feature. 
drag that in the X direction. To here. And there we go. Alright, so we're good. Alright. So, just in case you were wondering, I'm sure somebody would pick it up. If I was watching the video, I would have picked it up. So, I hope that helps clarify it a little bit. So, that's the connection. And uh, I'll do another one some other time. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.